Springfield XDM 10 millimeter out here on Riders Range. We're going to talk about this gun. We're also going to shoot it. And at the very end, we're going to have some additional footage with special guest, the firearm guy, to shoot the 10 millimeter and his 9 millimeter XDM side by side. Stick around. <laughs> All right, the XDM 10 millimeter, five and a quarter inch barrel comes in uh, Springfield's Competition Series handguns, and uh, that's because it has a match grade barrel, has adjustable rear sights, and uh, five red fiber optic front sight, and they also have a four and a half inch uh, version of this uh, same gun. Uh, these five and a quarter inch uh, guns with adjustable sights are pretty difficult to find. I looked all over the auction sites and uh, can't find a five and a quarter 10 millimeter. Uh, I've only found a couple of the four and a half inch 10 millimeters and uh, those are running right now for around $900 even though they got an MSRP of um, less than 800. Uh, let's take a quick look around it. We already mentioned the fiber optic front and the fully adjustable rear uh, adjustable for windage and elevation. Um, of course, the Springfield logo right here on the top. It does have a cutout in the, the slide, which reduces the weight of the slide just a little bit. Forward cocking serrations, which are not overly aggressive, but they certainly do get the job done. Uh, rear cocking serrations, a little bit of a chevron mark like the front. And again, not overly aggressive, but uh, work with, uh, with and without gloves. Um, oh, some people won't like this, but I do like the grip safety on firearms. Just one more safety feature, particularly when you've got a striker fired gun that is mostly cocked most of the time. Uh, slight scallops in the, uh, the grips does allow for the support thumb uh, either side to give you just a, a little bit of a, uh, of a index mark, if you will. And I, I kind of need that because I have a tendency to shoot this like I shoot a 1911 with a high thumb, and when I do that, that uh, uh, rides the uh, uh, slide stop lever down just like I'd be riding a safety down on a 1911, which obviously isn't good when you're shooting it because if the slide stop lever is held down, it's not going to stay open on the last shot. And the gun is somewhat ambidextrous. It comes with a magazine release that'll work from right or left side that you don't have to change um, to suit your, uh, your handed style. Uh, different texturing, certainly uh, not stippled, not, uh, not checkered, not overly aggressive. Um, I get a good grip on it. By the way, it does come with uh, interchangeable back straps, three different sizes, uh, but they all have the same pattern on it. Um, it's, again, it's not overly aggressive. It's not going to abrade the hand, but I did a fair amount of shooting with this with what limited 10 millimeter ammo I had and never had a problem with slipping out of my hand. Uh, it still has the uh, the old-fashioned hook on the front of the trigger guard for those who insist on shooting with their finger on the front of the trigger guard. It does have a, a three-slot Picatinny rail on the front if you want to hang a flashlight, hang your lunchbox, whatever. Again, typical polymer frame. It does have a cocked indicator in the, the back of the slide, and this is where you can also tell and it is empty of course. This is where you can also tell that as you're pressing the trigger that um, striker does not continue to protrude more than just a tiny fraction which means this gun is about 95 percent cocked when you're carrying it. That's why I like that grip safety. Yeah, with striker fire guns people don't see that does have a loader chamber indicator on the top. If there's a live round in there, that'll protrude. You can feel it, uh, so you know when, when there's one there. Um, fully supported match grade barrel. It does have a, a ramp, and they claim it's fully supported, so you don't get uh, the the bulge cases as is typical in a lot of 40s. And of course, 10 millimeter and 40 are the same diameter, just different case length. It has a full length guide rod in it. Um, decent magwell for a for a polymer frame. So let's look at what this gun comes with. All right, the uh, the box from Springfield is a it's a nice hard case, and comes fitted for the gun, and comes with again the interchangeable back straps, uh, lock, two magazines, plus one more that will be in the gun. So actually three 15 round magazines, which is nice, uh, unless you happen to live in one of those states that somehow f thinks that 15 round magazines is evil. So again, nicely fitted. The one thing I found with this case though, if the gun is uh, all the way down in the case, it's difficult to get up without 
actually getting somewhere near the trigger or the, or the controls to, to pull it out of there. Surprisingly, not a real heavy gun either. Let's take a look at what this gun weighs. So the gun itself, plus 15 rounds of 200 grain ammunition, plus one more for the chamber. We have 42.9 ounces. Not that bad. Now it sounds a little heavy to start with, but let's look at something else that we can compare it with. And this is a steel frame 45, and if we put a magazine with eight rounds in it, and one more 230 grain round for the chamber, we're at 46.8. So with only nine rounds compared to 16, the 45 is a heavier gun. Now the question is, of course, does that lightweight make the uh, the gun recoil more? Well, we're going to show that at the uh, the very end of this video. But I shot it a fair amount. Again, I don't have a lot of 10 millimeter ammo, but I shot it with 180 grain uh, factory loads, 200 grain factory loads, and also shot it with uh, some of the owners' um, hand loads. And now is the time I want to thank my friend Jim Huff for loaning me this gun. He also loaned the Springfield 1911 in. Uh, 10 millimeter. I'll put the link up here to that one. Um, and uh, Jim provided some of his hand loads, but I don't want to shoot up all of his ammunition, so I managed to scrounge up two boxes of, uh, of 10s, 180 grain and uh, 200 grain. So I'll put a few rounds through that with this gun. Um, I did not change the sights on this. When I borrow a gun from somebody, I don't like messing with the sights. And these are, are decent sights, easy to pick up, but you'll see that I, the gun was shooting a little bit to the left with uh, all the ammunition I put through it. And that means I uh, didn't adjust the sights to the right to accommodate me, but when I was shooting at 25 and 50 yards, I did have to aim a little bit to the right to be able to hit uh, what I needed to, but it also did a good job of hitting 10 inch plates out at 50 yards. So, decent gun, doesn't recoil as much as I thought it would, uh, reliable, accurate, and going to be durable with the, uh, the melanite coating on the, both the barrel and the, uh, on the slide, and certainly a decent gun for, uh, for power. I understand this is kind of the go-to gun for uh, those people in bear country who uh, want to have some defense on them and uh, don't want to carry a revolver. They'd rather have 16 rounds of 10 millimeter than 6 rounds of 44 Magnum. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that, but then again, I don't go hiking in bear country. All right, let's do some shooting on the range with this gun, and then we'll come back and wrap this up. It shoots a little to the left. So we'll start with the black 12. How about the white 8 next to it? I'm going to do the center of the orange silhouette. All right, can I get it back? I won't argue with that. The white 10 between the silhouettes. Let's go back to that 8. I like the way that moves. Got to hit it though. White silhouette on the left of the black head. Like the sound of that. And one more time. Alright, move it out to 50. We're going to start with the 16 inch, it should be the easy one. That's the white with the black center that sits right in the middle of the targets. I missed it. Let's try that again. There we go. Can I get the white 12 inch high right? Sure can. Just Hold just a hair right of center on that. All right, let's go all the way over to the left, try the white 10 inch. That was holding almost straight on. Let's try the orange 10 inch next to it. Hard to see with this red fiber optic front sight, but let's give it a try. Try that orange 10 one more time. No, really hard to see with that red fiber optic almost covers the whole target. Let's do the orange silhouette with the black center. How am I missing that one? There we go. Uh, white 12 inch next to it below the 16. One more time. There we go. All right, you can see that four and a half pound trigger pull on this. Uh, we didn't mention that in the earlier uh, films, but four and a half pound trigger with a little bit of take up. Of course, it has your um, ubiquitous 
trigger safety tab, but again, it's only a drop safety or prevent the trigger from pulling if something hits the side of it, but if it's the front, it's, it's still going to pull through. You already know my opinion on these trigger tabs. All right, so you got take up, fair amount of movement, but it's not objectionable movement and uh, a fairly clean brake. Fairly long reset, but it's tactile, it's audible, and then again, some movement before you get to a fair amount of trigger pull. Doesn't interfere with the accuracy at all, uh, and the gun shoots very, very well. And uh, would I be happy to own this gun? Yeah, in fact, I looked at uh, whether or not to uh, consider a 10 millimeter Springfield or a 10 millimeter Glock, and I think I'll go for the Springfield. They really need to make the uh, the five and a quarter inch one optics ready, not just adjustable sights. I think they do the four and a half inch one optics ready. Uh, of course, if you're carrying an optic, that extra barrel length doesn't give you any advantage for sight radius, but it does give you a little more advantage for the uh, the velocity of a cartridge, just having that extra three quarters of an inch of barrel. So, really nice gun. Very happy with it. Uh, very happy to have uh, borrowed it. And again, I want to thank Jim for loaning it to me. And uh, if you stick around, then uh, we're going to do some bonus footage with the firearm guy when we put this gun side by side with a 9mm XDM just to look at the difference in recoil. So if you like this video, we appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, click on the notifications bell so you know what's coming up on Rider's Range. Comments on this video are appreciated. Uh, that uh, The more comments we get, the more it helps us uh, visibility on, uh, on YouTube. We appreciate it if you share this video. Uh, share it on uh, uh, Facebook or uh, the forums that you may be on. Uh, let people know that uh, Rider's Range is out there and we're testing firearms comments on anything other than this video, uh, anything that you'd like to see or comments in general, send them to info at ridersrange.com. So that's a quick look at the XDM 10 millimeter, five and a quarter inch barrel here on uh, Riders Range. Thanks for stopping in and stick around for the bonus footage with the firearm guy. All right, does the 10 have significantly more recoil than the nine? Stay tuned, we're gonna check it out. So we have the Springfield XD 10 and we have the XD Elite in 9mm. We're going to try a few shots out of both and uh, just see how they work out here in Rider's Range. 9mm first, 147 grain Federal. Just put a few rounds through and uh, just we're not uh, going for accuracy, we're just going for function. Alright, that's five shots out of the 9mm. Now let's give the 10 a try. And five shots out of the ten. <laughs> a little bit more punch, but certainly not objectionable. Uh, we have a special guest here today. The firearm guy is here, since this is his 9mm Elite, and we would like him to try that uh, both guns and see if the 9 or the 10, um, what's the difference between them. Welcome to Rider's Range. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be out here at Rider's Range. And we'll go ahead and shoot the 9 first. And the XD in 10 millimeter. Well, what are you're you looking at a 180 grain bullet versus a 115 grain bullet. Yeah, we're shooting 147s out of the nine, so we tried to get them as close oh, as we okay. could. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I will say that the XDM models certainly eat up the recoil very nicely. So you're not going to see a great difference, but I will mention that the 10 millimeter does punch a little bit harder. A little bit, but not. I didn't find an objection at it's all. Not, it's not something that you're going to pick up and say, whoa, there's a big difference. But when you shoot them side by side, because I think that's really what you need to do is shoot them side by side to, to get that true feel. I'll say this did punch back a little bit more. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But nothing that I would object to. It surprised me that the 10 really wasn't as bad as I expected it to be. Right. Well, the, the 10 millimeter round doesn't offer the recoil that I've heard a lot of people mention that it does. Oh. I found it to be a pretty mild shooting round. And we're dealing with full size handguns here. So the, you know, the, the internals, everything with the XD that, that I have come to know eats up the recoil quite a bit. It's interesting you said that these were 147 grain nines because originally 
I, I when I shot him, I was thinking, you know, this I'm used to hit feeling nothing at all. Yeah. So I did feel a little bit more with the higher weight bullets with the nines, but in each case they were very manageable. I'm happy with them. Hey, thanks for stopping by and checking it out. Always a pleasure. I, I love Riders it. Range. This place is really something. Thanks for having me.